Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with a Therapist on this lovely Wednesday. I am excited to talk about a topic that is a little heavy, which I guess a lot of my topics tend to be since we talk about mental health, but I wanted to differentiate some things based on some of the questions that I've gotten in the past and currently surrounding trauma, what it is, what a traumatic event is, why some people can even experience the same exact trauma and one person seems to be fine afterwards and the other person may not be okay and they may exhibit some of those signs of PTSD and just kind of helping people parse out what this really means. So there's a big difference between trauma and traumatic events. And so we can experience what we would label a traumatic event. And again, that definition has expanded. And I want to give you guys some tangible examples of what traumatic events are and kind of see if you can connect the dots to any of those. Because I know even in my own journey, I used to think traumatic events were very specific. And now I realize that there are so many other things that also qualify as a traumatic event. And traumatic events are what happen to us. Um, and typically they are things that are out of our control and our response to it, right? The way that we interpret that event, the way we make meaning, the way our nervous system responds to that event is more about what happens inside of us and can create what we call trauma. So when one person experiences a car accident, if they weren't if they didn't see it coming and maybe their body was a bit more loosey-goosey and they didn't get as injured and their brain didn't make too much meaning of it, they could walk away from that car accident and not have a traumatic imprint on their body or their mind about that situation. Whereas maybe the person who was driving the car saw it happening, felt out of control and slammed on the brakes and then their whole nervous system, everything's you know, stiffened up. And so not only could they have sustained physical injuries more so than the person in the back seat, but also that mental image of what happened and that feeling of being out of control can leave more of a traumatic imprint where that person is more likely to have trauma as a result of that car accident. So again, two people experiencing the same exact thing can really based on not only what was happening in the moment, but we also know that it's what happens after the trauma too. So there's this thing called secondary trauma. And now we understand that the way people respond to our trauma, so the response that they have to our trauma, um, and if we have other resources or sources of support, that really plays a role and if trauma imprints on us long term. And when I say trauma imprints on us long term, that means that, you know, we go through a traumatic event and then something about the way that we see ourselves, the world, a situation or life shifts in a negative way. And we might create rules around that um, to avoid being in that traumatic situation again. Um, we could develop PTSD, but essentially that is trauma when we shift our trust or our um, connection to these things in a, in a good way. Um, and view them negatively or as untrustworthy after this traumatic event. And so that's really what trauma is. And for some people, even if they have that initial response and they struggle to trust, sometimes when they have these resources of people who come in and are able to really give them support and hear their story and help them process the trauma early on, they're able to move through it and process it and come back to a space where their brain and their body feels like the world is a safe place again. And so it's not just the actual traumatic event that happens, but it's also what sources of resource do we have or support after the fact? Where do we have safe places to process it or talk about it um, or even have a language for it? and also how people respond to our trauma. So we see this often, especially in childhood sexual trauma, where the way someone responds to us when we do, if we were to share that we had that event really matters. So if somebody overreacts to it, or if they, um, if they have the disgust reaction, or if they, it causes them a lot of anxiety, that can make a person who's gone through a childhood trauma feel even more hopeless and kind of frantic um and even if or if we were shamed or if we were told hey it was actually your fault right that also can create some complex trauma so 
I know I'm talking about all these different features, but I'm really trying to give people like a 360 view of what happens for us when we have a traumatic event and what trauma really is. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was specifically going into detail about what a traumatic event is. Because again, often I think people think of like car accidents or a divorce, and those are kind of easy to recognize different traumatic events. But you also may have incurred trauma if you've gone through the following events. And I am going to look at a list just so I kind of keep some structure to this. Um, but I'll go into detail about what they mean exactly. So any sort of loss or breakup of a significant relationship, and that doesn't just mean romantic relationships. That can also be deep friendships we have. Um, even in our childhood, if they moved away or if something happened to a friend of ours, that can be deeply traumatic. Um, also, if we have a very humiliating or deeply disappointing experience, um, if we have experiences of rejection or embarrassment, which could happen on the playground or in class when we raise our hand and maybe we don't have the right answer. Um, so even those little things can create, you know, what we call little t traumas. Also, the discovery of a life-threatening il illness or a disabling condition, um, not just of ourselves, but of our close loved ones, especially when we're little. It's not just about the things that happen to us, but it's also the way that the people that we look up to in our lives as kind of our caregivers and our sources of support, if they go through something traumatic, that can be traumatic to us too because we're kind of absorbing everything that's going on for them. Um, it could also be the forced separation early in life from a primary caregiver, whether that was via jail or they moved away or divorce all of those different things are also um, could be traumatic events to someone um, or if you have if you're the child of somebody who struggles with substance abuse or if you live with somebody who struggles with substance abuse that could be a major trauma as well growing up with somebody who struggles with mental health issues can be traumatic and that's not to put shame or blame on anybody in our family system that struggles with mental illness but you know, that environment itself can create some trauma for a kiddo. And luckily, if somebody works through their mental illness, that can also be resolved and very healing for their kiddo. So that's the good news. Um, there can even be birth trauma. So I think people always think about trauma being stuff that happens to us while we're like walking around the earth. Um, but we also know that in utero, there's trauma that can happen if our mom or, or another caregiver that's close by goes through something traumatic, we actually pick up on what's going on in their nervous system. You know, as we are developing our own nervous systems, we, we pick up on that. We're actually seeing how babies are born with higher levels of cortisol if their mom was going through something very stressful when they were conceived, um, it, slash during pregnancy as well. So there's all sorts of different ways that it could be different events even before we were born or our actual birth can be very traumatic as well. And again, these aren't gonna be things that we necessarily know or can recall because we don't have that um, memory in our brain yet, but our body remembers and keeps the score. And so often that's when people are like, I don't know why I do what I do, or I don't know why my body reacts the way it, it reacts. And often that can be tied to a trauma that happened or a body trauma that happened before our cognition even remembered memories, right? Or it could be that we're just not really connecting the dots to what trauma actually is. Um, falls or sports injuries can also be very traumatic. I know that people have definitely written those off as well and said, oh, well, I really hurt my knee, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but that can be traumatic. Being bullied can be very traumatic. I think that's kind of an easier one to identify, but I think some people also write that off because they're like, oh, every kid gets bullied. But that also really can impact a kiddo and the way that they view themselves and the world. Um, also hearing about violence or the sudden death of someone close or if you are around a lot of violence in your neighborhood or um, domestic violence in your household, that can also be traumatic. And so I, I wanted to go through all of these things just so I could paint a picture that trauma likely happens to all of us, right? In different and small ways and subtle ways, but also in those bigger ways. 
And the good news is that we can definitely heal from it and that having a supportive environment is very protective against us having PTSD or trauma later in life based on that traumatic event. Um, but yeah, but that we also recognize that it that it probably has happened to us in ways that we haven't connected the dots and the importance of potentially healing that if we are still experiencing the signs of trauma later on in life. So I've talked about different signs of trauma in my other videos, so I'd highly recommend you go to them if you're looking to learn more about what that means and how that might be showing up in your life. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday, and I will connect with you tomorrow.